Hello, welcome to Rethinking the Six Wives of Henry VIII. In this episode, we are talking Catherine Parr. So if you don't know who Catherine Parr was, Catherine Parr was Henry's sixth wife and his final wife. So what are the legacies that have been left of Catherine? Well, people tend to think of Catherine as the survivor. She is the one who survived Henry and she is the one that outlived him. Now, although this is true, she only actually survived him by about 18 months. It was Anne of Cleves who was the survivor of all the wives, really. We also tend to think of her as this kind of nurse figure and that she was more of a nurse to Henry than a wife, which, mm, I mean, she did have a certain caring role, but he had lots of doctors around him all the time at this point. Um, Henry himself was quite poorly. He had a list of ailments as long as your arm. And I'm going to be honest, you could smell Henry at this point before you could see him. So... That's a nice image for you. <laughs> so the four legacies I believe Catherine deserves to be remembered by are, firstly, that she was a loving and kind stepmother. Secondly, she was a woman who was devoted to her religion and her God. Thirdly, that she was an intellectual and a learned woman. And fourthly, she always looked like a queen. So let's start with the first legacy, that she was a kind and loving stepmother, because quite simply, she was. Now, let's start with the oldest of Henry's children. So, of course, we have Mary. So, Mary is the daughter of Henry VIII with his first wife, Catherine of Aragon. But there wasn't a great age gap between Catherine Parr and Mary. There was about four years. And actually, Catherine Parr was in Mary's household before um, Henry kind of chose her as his wife. And they had this kind of relationship of more close friends. However, Mary was happy when Catherine married Henry. Um, she already knew Catherine, she already knew what type of woman she was, and um, although they didn't have the typical stepmother-stepdaughter relationship due to the age, they, they were close friends. But it is, of course, in the younger children where Catherine played this loving stepmother role because, of course, Henry had two other children. He had Elizabeth with his second marriage, which was to Anne Boleyn, and he had Edward, which was from his third marriage with Jane Seymour. And Elizabeth and Edward, there wasn't the greatest age gap. There was only a few years between them. And Catherine played a brilliant role in, in ensuring that they had a good education. Not only did she want to make sure that the children had the best tutors and were learning all things needed to become great monarchs, they, she also gave them something that they've never had before, which was a family unit and a family home. And it is really in Henry VIII's last marriage that we see this family kind of come together properly for the very first time because previous to this with his previous wives it had been very up and down and quite a bit of turmoil but what Catherine really wanted to do was she wanted to unite this family and she does and she brings them these three children kind of le leading quite separate lives and this king and bring them together as a family unit and in this family unit the children absolutely thrive. On New Year's it was traditional to give gifts and little Elizabeth gave a gift to Catherine Parr and her father and it was a translation that Elizabeth had done herself. It was called Mirror of the Christian Soul and other translations and Elizabeth had put these in various languages and it was to show how far she had come in her education and she had gifted this to her stepmother and her father to show how well she was doing. 
Now, something that we all know about Henry is that he does love his wars. And again, he goes off to fight his old enemy, the French, and he leaves Catherine as regent. Now, this says a huge thing in itself, but not only that, he puts his children in her care. Now, after the death of Henry VIII, Catherine part in relation to being a stepmother, that didn't change for her at all. She still played the mothering role. Now, little Edward himself, he actually called Catherine Parr mother. After the death of Henry VIII, Elizabeth actually went to live with Catherine Parr. So Catherine Parr remarried quite quickly, I might add, to someone who she did truly love, and that was Thomas Seymour. Now, Thomas Seymour had a ward, and that was Lady Jane Grey. I'm sure you've heard of her. So Elizabeth went to live with Catherine Parr, her new husband, Thomas Seymour, and Lady Jane Grey. And guess who supervised the education for both Elizabeth and Lady Jane Grey? You guessed it, it was Catherine herself. Another way in which Catherine shows her motherly side possibly is with the Thomas Seymour scandal. So as I said, Elizabeth went to live with Catherine and Thomas. There is a scandal involving Elizabeth and Thomas and now there's two ways you can look at it. Catherine Parsons Elizabeth away. This was either because Catherine blamed Elizabeth. She's done the typical thing, she's blamed the other woman for the scandal. Or she sent her away to try to protect her. Not just protect her from Thomas, but to protect her from her reputation and damaging that reputation, but also to protect her from hopefully her brother not finding out who was king by this point, from little Edward not finding out about the scandal and Elizabeth's reputation and her relationship with her brother being damaged. It's a difficult one to know which is which. I would personally love to think that it's Catherine putting her motherly views forward because she loves Elizabeth and trying to protect her, but we don't know. The next legacy I think Catherine deserves is that she was a woman devoted to her religion and to her God. Now, Catherine Parr was actually raised a Catholic, but then she turned to become a religious reformist. I mean, Catherine Parr was actually named after Catherine of Aragon, funny enough. And Catherine had no desire to marry Henry. I mean, by this point, let's be honest, his reputation was not the best. He'd executed two wives, he'd bashed his first wife, he'd humiliated his fourth, third got out of it because she died, but oh, would you want to marry him? Personally, I wouldn't. I mean, his reputation is abysmal. However, the reason why Catherine chose to marry wasn't because she desired to be queen, it's because she she thought that's what God wanted of her. She thought she needed to continue with the religious reform. In Catherine's mind, God wanted Catherine to become queen, to complete the reformation. Now I need to kind of talk a little bit about this. So what Henry had done in terms of the reformation was to do things to suit himself. So the reformation that happened was because Henry wanted to marry Anne Boleyn quite simple. He wanted to marry this woman, but he was Catholic, his country was Catholic. It's not a done thing. And so, of course, he broke with the church in Rome, made himself supreme head of the church in England, he can do what he wants. However, Henry was himself a Catholic. I know. And so in terms of the Reformation, he did things in order to please himself. So he did enough to get his um, divorce slash annulment from Catherine of Aragon. That was the thing that he obviously wanted to achieve. He also did it enough so that he could plunder the churches and um, obtain their money and their wealth and their trinkets and have all that money for himself and all that power for himself. But that was sort of it. He didn't complete the Reformation, essentially. And this country was left in this sort of weird limbo effect where your religion was teetering on an edge and no one really knew which way to go, whether you should be one way or the other. 
Henry had started a reformation but had not finished it because as I said inside Henry was Catholic and so Catherine thought right I will become queen this is what God wants me to do and I will encourage Henry to complete the reformation to the full and so here we have Catherine Parr who becomes essentially the first Protestant queen of England. Catherine Parr's religion was very important to her. When Henry went away, again, war. She held secret prayer meetings. Now these were done in secret because of course religion was the epitome of life in this age and you had to be careful what you were saying. So she held them in secret because what she was saying was something which shouldn't be overheard. Catherine Parr even discussed matters of religion with Henry. Now this actually ended up getting her into rather hot water. There was a warrant for her arrest that was drawn up. Now luckily Catherine found out about this and in time she was able to get to Henry to talk to him and to persuade him that the reason why she talked to him about religion was to learn from him. She wanted to push him and her ideas to then learn from him. It was a really big decision for her to make because of course she is someone who is a religious woman but she did have two choices when she found out about the arrest. She could either say okie dokie, yep yeah, that's me, religious reformist, yep yeah, Protestant, yep yeah, that's me and then risk being um, executed, she'd be executed, but being seen as a martyr for her religious beliefs, or she could lie. And she could lie and survive. And that's the choice that she made. Now, something that you should also know about Catherine was that she was an author. Catherine actually wrote two books, one of which was in Henry's lifetime and one was published after his death. The one published after death was called Lamentations of a Sinner and it was very much Ooh. It really did show her religious beliefs and was certainly something that you could not publish during the reign of the monarch of Henry VIII. It was too much. However, Edward, who became Edward VI, when he became king, she could publish it because he himself was very devoutly Protestant, so she could she could get away with it and show her reformist beliefs. The next legacy I believe Catherine deserves is that she was an intellectual, that she was a learned woman. Now Catherine always wanted to learn, she always wanted to improve herself, she always wanted to put herself in good standing at court and with Henry. As I mentioned previously, she was a published author, she published two books, one in Henry's lifetime, one in her stepson's Edward VI, and it, it kind of looks like Catherine Parr was following on from Henry's early wives, Catherine of Aragon and Anne Boleyn as this learned royal. And when she got herself into this hot water and it looked like there's possibility that she could be arrested, it was her intelligence that saved her. She said to Henry she's saying radical things in order to learn from him. She became meek and submissive in regards to religion. And from doing that, she managed to save her life. The last legacy that I believe Catherine deserves to have is that she always looked like a queen. Now, Catherine Parr was not the youngest of Henry's wives, but she was a good looking woman. And she always liked to make herself look good, look regal. Um, she loved fine clothes. She's in fact the most painted of Henry VIII's wives, so if you're looking for portraiture of Henry VIII's wives, the easiest ones to find are ones of Catherine Parr. She loved doing all the typical royal things, she loved music, she loved plays, she loved hunting, all the typical royal pursuits. Now after her brush with death, Catherine changed herself a little bit. She became more of a decorative queen, a queen that looks regal and performs royal duties. And aside goes her thoughts on politics and her thoughts on religious reform. And there she was just going to be a good 
kind of traditional medieval queen. So when you think of Catherine Parr, don't think of her as just the survivor or the nurse. Think of her as a kind, loving stepmother, devoted to learning, education, and her God. And a fantastic looking queen. So that is it for this episode on Catherine Parr. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please give it a thumbs up. Chat to me in the comments section, all things Catherine Parr, and I shall see you soon for the next video. Take care. Bye.